Hello students. Uh, in previous class, we have studied many things, but in today's class, we will study about the invention of scientist. But before starting with this, please do watch part one and part two videos of current electricity. So let us start with today's concept. My dear children, there was a German scientist named as George Simon Ohm. He found that potential difference and current is directly proportional to each other. Okay. And he established this relationship and laid it down in the form of a statement. So let us see what is his statement. What he says, current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied between the ends of the conductor provided temperature remains constant. Children, when I read this statement, it is a bit dif difficult for you to understand. So let us take an example for this. So your parents, means your mother and father, mostly, they both have their own bikes, vehicles, correct? So let us say your mother has scooty pet and your father has Activa. Okay, they have to go to office every day, so they have their own bikes. So now what happens? Your mother fills one liter of petrol in her bike and she covers a distance of 30 kilometer per hour in one liter of a petrol. Then father also, father also fills one liter of a petrol and he covers a distance of 35 km per hour in one liter. Then mother thought, when I filled one liter, I covered 30 km. And when my husband filled one liter of petrol, he covered 35 km. So today I will fill two liters of petrol. And let me check. So she fills two liter of petrol in her bike and she covers a distance of 60 km per hour. Okay. And then fathers also informs that today, even I had I had filled two liters of petrol and my vehicle covered 75, 75 distance. So distance covered by father's vehicle was 75 km per hour. So here you can see the clearly difference. When mother filled one liter, it is 30. When father filled one liter, it is 35. So why that difference is there? We have one thing we have observed, the quantity of petrol is increased. The distance covered is also increased. So this concept is applicable for Ohm's law. When we increase the current, potential difference, voltage also increases. But there is one thing that we have observed. Why that 30 and 35 difference? Children, that is mileage or we can say average. And that mileage or average term, we can relate with resistance. So when the current is flowing through a conductor, in a conductor, there, there will be a resistor. So what he has mentioned, current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied between the ends of the conductor provided temperature remain constant. So temperature and physical condition should be remains constant. So he has performed one experiment and when he has taken a different voltage, so what he has in first he has taken one volt and he checked the current. It was something to ampere. Okay. And here he has taken Two volt, then current he has observed here four ampere. And here he has taken three amp, three volt, then current is also increased to 2.5. So what he has observed every time when he increased voltage, current is also increased, or vice versa, we can say that when he increased current, voltage is also increased. So when it is increasing both, we say directly proportional. When both decreases also, it is directly proportional. So we can symbolically, we can present as I is directly proportional to 
potential difference. You can say current is directly proportional to potential difference. To replace this thing, what is this directly proportional symbol? We have to take constant to replace this and to get equi equality. We have to write here constant. Okay. So I have replaced this and I have written here equal to sign. But when we are replacing, we have to write constant as well into V. So what is this constant here? What we got a constant in both mileage or average? That is R. So it is 1 by R into V. So V is equals to transpose this R to this side. Division changes to multiplication. So V is equals to I R. So Ohm's law, mathematical expression of Ohm's law is V is equals to I R. Okay. And what is R here? It is a resistance of the conductor. This is the new term you are going to study now. That is R. Once we'll come to the school, we'll perform this experiment with the help of ammeter, voltmeter, instrument we'll take and we'll check how the current is varying and how the current voltage is also changing. Okay, so let us move to the next one. That is, what is resistance? So resistance is also, we got it from Ohm's law. That is, V is equals to IR. So what is this R? R is resistance of the conductor. But what is exactly resistor? That is, property that resists flow of current. What is this resist? The meaning of resist is, oppose or we can say uh, obstacles so what is resistance property that resists flow of current now children for this we'll take one more example you think that you are in the class okay your friend and you are in the classroom and you want to go out of the class but you're one of your friend who is very fat is standing on the way to the door and you want to pass. Is it easy to you to pass from that door? Because your friend, one more friend is very fat. So there will be a very less place to pass. So you can relate like this way. So the, there are some obstacles to pass the charges from one place to another. So you can say that you can relate. You are the charges who wants to pass through the conductor, door is the conductor, and your friend who is standing at the door, you can say he's a resistor, resistance. Okay. So when you're passing, it's difficult for you to move because he's obstacle there. Correct. So let us come to this. Now, here I have taken one conductor. So, dear children, in previous slide, I have informed you in every conductor, there will be atoms. So these are the atoms and outside you can see these are the free electrons. I have explained you about free electrons as well. So what happens when these free electrons moves from one place to another place, there are number of atoms. So what happens? They may collide with these atoms and this collision is abstraction. That collision is only called as what? Resistance. Because easily they cannot move because so many uh, atoms are present here. So what happens? It's moving here smoothly. But it, when it came to the near, you can see sometimes it is colliding with the atom. So again, he has to change his way. So this obstacles are called as what? Resistance. So clear? We'll move to the next one. Children. Here I have taken the example of low resistance and high resistance. Let us take, this is the conductor. Okay. In this conductor, you can observe that the atoms are far from each other. And in this conductor, the atoms are very near to each other. Okay. So you can differentiate here when this electron starting from this end it is moved very fast compared to these electrons. Why? Because here the number of atoms are less compared to the high resistance. Here number of atoms are more. So what is happening? There is a more collision. So the current is flowing very slow. That, then what we can say that 
we can say that when the resistance is more current is less here the resistance is more so current is less here the resistance is resistance is what less so current is more correct so this is called as a low resistance and this is called as a high resistance okay, next factors on which resistance depends we have to understand factors on which resistance depends so the first factor is length of the conductor so how i will explain this how this factor is applicable for the resistance okay so children here you can see i have taken one conductor when i have taken this conductor when you count this atoms 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 atoms are there okay but what i do now i will take the length of the conductor is more now i have increased the length of the conductor so what is happening you count the number of atoms here how many are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so number of atoms are more here so what is happening the resistance is more if length is more resistance is also more so have you clarified length of the conductor resistance is directly proportional to length because resistance increases length increases a length increases resistance also increases okay move to the next one cross sectional area of a conductor now ma'am what is this cross sectional area of a conductor my dear children here we have taken conductor correct this is a conductor and what happened this conductor this perimeter is there no this perimeter what we have done here we have increased little bit down hmm. so when we are increasing the area of a cross section what is happening we are not increasing this perimeter we are just increasing the cross section okay we are not increasing the length only we are increasing the here breadth okay so you can see there is a empty space now so when there is a empty space what happens resistance obstacle is less and the electrons can flow easily through this that means if you increase the area of a conductor resistance will decrease okay so we can say resistance is inversely proportional to 1 by a inversely means one is decreasing one is increasing and directly proportional means both are increasing so clear about the second factor okay let us move to the third factor that is nature of material of conductor we have to understand now nature of material of conductor so resistance also depends on nature of conductor Uh, what is this ma'am nature of conductor now children if you take aluminum wire the resistance of aluminum wire is different and if you take copper wire the resistance of a copper wire is also different it is not same aluminum and copper so here its resistance is also depending on the nature of the material of a conductor which type of material we are using on that also the resistance varies okay then the last one is temperature of conductor children if we increase the temperature of any conductor automatically resistance also increases okay so they have given the temperature of a conductor if you take any conductor and if you start increasing if you are heating more so when it is heated up what happens the resistance are more in that so if the resistance are more the current flowing through the conductor is less so it is written that resistance is inversely proportional to length upon area of cross section so to remove this inversely proportional sign to replace this we have to take equal to when we are taking equal to for resistance here one symbols come this is called as rho this is rho okay rho into l by a and this rho is nothing but specific resistivity specific resistivity means what ma'am now as i have in, as i have told you here temperature no nature of a conductor material if you take aluminum 
that specific resistance resistivity is different of this resistance and if you take copper again the specific resistivity is different so it is r is equal to rho into l by a so what is rho rho is a specific resistance okay so we'll finish with this today and we'll start in the next class about the limitations of ohm's law so children go through this video and note down the points if you have any doubts regarding this points just note down and keep so that when you come back you can discuss with me